Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our YouTube channel, uh, Dr. Akif Beg. Today we'll be taking a session on low voltage ECGs. So what is low voltage ECG is any ECG which has an amplitude of QRS. So basically what do you need to see is any, in, in any ECG, whatever the QRS is there. So QRS, all the three waves, which we'll see then including that the negative Q component, the positive R, and then the negative S wave. So including all three, if the if in the limb blades the total amplitude is less than 5 mm it is called as low voltage ecg so less than 5 mm means less than five small squares similarly the amplitude of qrs morphology in the precordial leads what do you mean by precordial leads is v1 to v6 so limb leads means the lead 1 2 3 avl avr and avf whereas the precordial leads means v1 to v6 so if your amplitude of qrs in precordial leads that is chest leads is less than 10 mm that is less than 12 small squares or in the limb blitz is less than 5 millimeters, that is less than 5 small squares, it is called as low voltage ECG. So why does a low voltage ECG occur? So what, how, how will we explain that is that if you, are, uh, if there is a heart, so we put a chest leads or anything on the, over the uh, anterior part of the chest. So if anything, if the distance between the heart and the chest is increased because of any reason, that may lead to what is called as low voltage ECG. So it could be because of damping effect, uh, because of uh, various things which is accumulating uh, between the heart, that is a myocardium and the chest wall, that could be either a fluid or it can be a deposition of fat as you can see in the case of obesity. Fluid you can see like pericardial effusion or pleural effusion, which is dampening uh, the, the signals recording by the ECG electrodes or air. Maybe it's like if any pneumothorax is there and if that lung is covering the anterior part of the heart that can also dampen the uh, dampen the voltages and that's why lead to low voltage ECG. So other causes is loss of viable myocardium, which you can see in the cases of uh, myocardial infarction. There is a massive myocardial infarction, which is leading to uh, death of the myocardium or it also could be because of diffuse infiltration of the heart. Like any disease, which is uh, like leading to deposition of uh, a tissue or a protein or anything, a chemical inside the myocardium can also lead to low voltage ECG. Again, so what we have seen is low voltage ECG, the causes could be either cardiac causes or impedance causes. So impedance causes, as I said, pericardial. So if there is a pericardial effusion, so the distance between the myocardium and the chest wall is being increased or, because, or it being hindered because of the fluid. And that's why pericardial effusion is the most common cause. Or it will be pneumothorax, pleural effusion, or in case of smoking because of emphysema, lung enlargement, and also can dampen the uh, ECG effect. One thing. Another thing is obesity. As I said, if more fat is there in between uh, the myocardium and the chest wall, it will lead to a low voltage ECG. So cardiac causes, as we have already said, loss of viable myocardium, can seen in post-MI, or uh, hypothyroidism, or cardiomyopathy. So dampening effect, we have said, as we have already said, fluid is pericardial effusion or pleural effusion. Fat could be because of obesity or air is either emphysema or pneumothorax. Filtrative causes again is sarcoidosis, amyloidosis, myxedema or scleroderma. Loss of viable myocardium that is previous uh, massive MI or it could be also because of end stage dilated cardiomyopathy can lead to loss of viable myocardium. So here you can see an example of an ECG where you can see uh, that is uh, there is a low voltage ECG. As I've already said, the ECG should be less than 5 mm. You can see this is a one large square, one large square which is actually equivalent to 5 millimeters of height. So here you can see it is below this lower line and up to the line only. So it's almost like 3 to 4 uh, like small squares. So that is 3 to 4 mm that is in the limb blades. Okay, so it is, it is under the low voltage complexes. So again, here also it should be what we have said, it should be more than 10 mm. Normally to any QRS should be normal 10 mm. And here, if you calculate from here, the tip of the this R wave to this S wave, it's uh, only coming around eight uh, millimeters or eight small squares. So again, in the chest leads, we have said it should be less than 10 millimeters. So it is a low voltage ECG. And the important characteristic you can see is that there is electrical alternance. See, see the morphology of this QRS here and the morphology of QRS here. So one is large, then small, one uh, large, and again, it alters small, large, uh, and the small, the large ones. This is a characteristic of what is called as a massive pericardial effusion or could be because of cardiac tamponade. 
so another uh, causes uh, you can see is a prior uh, massive my anterior mi how you can say that you can see is a deep qf in the inferior leads that is lead 3 and lead avf there is a lead q uh, there is deep qf and also here then when you calculate in the chest lid you see what is the qrs is that is qrs is hardly 3 to 4 uh, small squares that is less than 10 mm so it fits under what is called as low voltage uh, ecg or low qrs ecg so to summarize again we will say only thing you are into remember is if your qrs amplitude is less than 5 mm in the limb lids or less than 10 mm in the qr uh, in the precordial lids it is called as low voltage ecg and the causes is very important to know what by it is causing that and treatment of that cause will automatically lead to improvement of the tc changes thank you hope you have uh, liked uh, my video uh, if you have uh, uh, if any queries you can comment on my comment box uh, do subscribe to my youtube channel dr akib beg for more interesting videos thank you